。マイクロソフトの創業者で、フォーブズの世界長者番付、13年連続1位を誇り、今でも世界トップレベルの資産を持ちながら、人類への慈善活動に励んでいるビル・ゲイツ氏。そんな彼の3つのルールを今回ご紹介します。それではどうぞ。1学びの姿勢は終わらない You build one of the great technology companies in the world and one of the great companies in the world and now you're building and operating one of the great、uh, foundations in the world how do you compare the challenge of building Microsoft to the challenge of now running the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? 私は、kind of、maniacal. I wasn't married, no kids, I didn't believe in weekends. Until I was about 30, I didn't believe in, in vacations at all. So it was incredibly fulfilling to write the code and be hands on, you know, stay up all night. So for my 20s and 30s, I think the Microsoft thing was perfect.、Uh, I didn't have the breadth of knowledge、uh, that would let me. Uh, play my role at the foundation. I think it was good preparation. And then after I you know, met Melinda, got married, started having kids, I was looking at the world more broadly,、uh, thinking about where the wealth should go. And I'd say they're equally difficult. You always know you could be doing better, that you should learn more, that、uh, you know, getting, you know, building the team and、uh, thinking about things in a, in a better way. So you see the positive results. But you always want to do even better. And so let's talk about Microsoft for a moment. So you started that when you were in high school and you were driven to be involved with computers. Were you alone? Were that many people knew about computers in those days? It was a fairly special time because computers, when I was young, were super expensive. And my friend Paul Allen and I actually snuck into places at the University of Washington where they had computers that weren't being used at night. And so we were fascinated by what the computer could do, but very few people were getting exposure. We had to go out of our way, and we were lucky that we did it all. And so then, when the idea of moving the computer onto a chip that Intel would make, and that would make the computer literally millions of times cheaper than the ones we were using, so both more powerful and available to people on a personal level. Then the idea of, okay, it would be very different. The software you needed, the way the industry would work. We were super lucky to、uh, be there when that was happening. So, what did your family think? Did they say there's something wrong with this young man? He wants to just do computers? They knew I was obsessed with computers, that I would skip athletics, that I'd go in overnight, that I'd you know, leave the house sometimes when they preferred I wouldn't go. Work at night on these things. And so it was kind of considered a little strange. And the big moment was when I said, instead of going to part of my senior year, that I wanted to go work、uh, for a company writing software. So they were great about allowing that to be my hobby. So you went to Harvard and you dropped out. Have you ever thought how your life could be better off if you had gotten your Harvard degree? Well, I, I'm a weird dropout because I take college courses all the time. I love、uh, learning company courses and, and things, so I love being a student. And there were smart people around, and you know, they fed you, and they gave you these nice grades that made you feel smart.、Uh, so I, I feel it was unfortunate、uh, that I didn't get to stay there. But I don't think I missed any knowledge because. You know, whatever I needed to learn, I, would, I was still in a, a learning mode. Well, I think that the key point there is you've got to enjoy what you do every day. 
And for me, that's working with very smart people. It's working on new problems. You know, every time we think, hey, we've had a little bit of success, we're pretty careful not to dwell on it too much because the bar gets raised. People's expectations of the, the products, we've always got customer feedback telling us that machines are too complicated, they're not, they're not natural enough. And the, the competition, uh, the, the, the breakthroughs, the research, make uh, the field I'm, I'm in, I think, the most exciting field there is. There's some other good fields. Biotechnology is a good field because it's uh, changing the world of, of medicine and, and health. But the computer industry, in, in particular software, you know, I, I think uh, is the most exciting, and I think I have the, the best job in that, in that business. Don't you think Dairy, Dairy Queen is more important than the company? <laughs> you can manage Dairy Queen. And I knew nothing about the millions of people living in unspeakable poverty and disease in developing countries. It took me decades to find out. I hope you've had a chance to think about how, in this age of accelerating technology, we can finally take on these inequities and we can solve them. Finding solutions is essential if we want to make the most of our caring. If we have clear and proven answers any time an organization or individual asks, how can I help, then we can get action and we can make sure that none of the caring in the world is wasted. The complexity makes it hard to mark a path of action for everyone who cares and makes it hard for their caring to matter. Cutting through complexity to find solutions runs through four predictable stages. Determine a goal, find the highest impact approach, deliver the technology ideal for that approach, and in the meantime, use the best application of technology you already have. This is the pattern. The crucial thing is to never stop thinking and working. The final step, after seeing the problem and finding an approach, is to measure the impact of the work and to share that success or failure so that others can learn from the efforts. I love getting people excited about software, but why can't we generate even more excitement for saving lives? You can't get people excited unless you can help them see and feel the impact. 